When we define pruning, it's the removal of living shoots, canes, leaves and other vegetative parts of the vine and um, this can be done throughout the growing season. Some of the principles that we use to prune grapevines are one, to unify the size and form of the grapevine and this can help with some of our management operations. Pruning also allows us to select the number of buds that we want to leave on a vine and this will influence the crop or yield of the vine and also the shoot vigour. By selecting these buds we also have control over how many fruitful shoots there are on the vine and we can optimally distribute those along the vine. When we're pruning grapevines we're aiming for a balance between vegetative growth and reproductive growth for a desired um, wine style. Cutting or removing tissue from a grapevine actually stimulates growth and what this does is allow us to build very large frameworks and also allows us to direct that growth in the vine. So at this time of year we do what we call winter pruning and as part of this uh, demonstration we'd like to show you the main types of pruning which are spur and cane pruning. So over here we have what we call spur pruning. When it comes to pruning a grapevine, it's really important that we understand the different parts of the vine. So here we've got a spur pruned grapevine and this part here is what we call the trunk. This offers a lot of support to the grapevine. Then you've got what we call a permanent cordon that's set up along the wire of the trellis system. In this case we've got what we call a bilateral cordon because it goes in both directions. When it comes to spur pruning, we set up spur positions along that permanent cordon and we try to make them as evenly spaced as possible. And you'll see here that these are the shoots that developed in the last um, season. What an actual spur position looks like is over here and you can see that two canes or shoots have been produced. So each have come from those two nodes that were left at pruning last year. And as I mentioned before, we want to limit that extension. So what we do is remove the most distal where we, where we can. So we make a cut through here. And then we take this more often than not back to two, a two node spur. And you can see here, node one, node two, at each of these nodes is what we call a compound bud, which you can see, see sitting on there there. And ideally what will happen is that a shoot will be produced from this node position or this from this compound bud. So this is our new spur position for the up and coming season. Okay so what we have here is a vine that's been spur pruned previously and what you'll notice straight away is that these spur positions have been set up evenly along this permanent cordon. I chose this vine because it also shows you what can happen when um, those spur positions become too extended from that main cordon. So over the next few seasons we'll be trying to set up a new spur position and stop that, that extension that you're seeing here. So this is an example of a spur pruned vine. Now we'll go have a look at some cane pruning. Okay, so here we've got a cane prune vine that was pruned previously and what you can see here, unlike the spur prune vine, is that there isn't that permanent cordon structure. So here we have um, a head trained vine instead, so we still have that trunk to offer support to the vine, but everything is trained from what we call the head. You'll notice also with this type of training system that we're wrapping down much longer canes each, each year and renewing them each year. Um, to be able to renew them we have to set up these renewal spurs. Here's a renewal spur that we need to leave at pruning for cane pruning um, and what you can see here is that we've left a two, two node spur again and ideally what will happen here is that we'll get shoots bursting in spring and these will form the replacement canes in the following season which you'll see here. So these have come from replacement spurs, but it's this replacement spur position that's pretty important to cane pruning. So this is the basics of cane pruning. You can have one cane wrapped down or it could be numerous like you see here. We've got, we've got four canes wrapped down. Uh, one of the reasons that you might choose to uh, apply cane pruning in your vineyard is fruitfulness and one of the ways that we assess that, as I've mentioned before in spur pruning, is we look at the fruitfulness of those compound buds at each of the node positions. We want a good internode length, so that's the spacing between the two nodes. 
uh, of roughly around six to eight centimetres if we can get it. Uh, we also like to have a good diameter on the cane, so not too thin but also not too thick. So we'll assess that in the vineyard before we, we choose the cane to wrap down. And preferably, if we can get it, we would prefer a round cane rather than a flat cane. A flat cane can indicate that there might be a higher virus load in the vine, so we wouldn't select those particular canes. And for many uh, wine grape varieties and other grape varieties, especially table grapes, the uh, nodes more distal along the cane are much more fruitful. So what we'll do is, is take some dissections of those buds and have a look at how many what we call inflorescence primordia and these are what develop into the bunches later in the season, how many of those are present in the compound bud uh, before pruning and that will help us make the decision of how many nodes we need to leave and, and also what type of pruning system we need to use. So this is just an example of what cane pruning looks like and this is in one of our experimental vineyards. So I mentioned before that grapevines have what we call compound buds and one of the things we do when we set our pruning levels in the vineyard is to actually dissect these compound buds and have a look at the developing inflorescence primordia. Now these develop into bunches so we make an assessment of those to get an idea of how many nodes we should leave at pruning. So what I've set up today is I've got the stereo microscope ready and, and a, bud, a compound bud ready for dissection. And I'm just going to show you how I dissect that and then show you the visual of what that looks like on, on the screen here. Okay, so I'm just making a few transverse sections through the compound bud. And I try to make these as fine as possible so that I don't remove too much tissue and can't make the assessment. And if you see on the screen, there's a primary and a secondary bud in the image. And you'll notice in the primary bud we also have what we call the inflorescence primordia that turn into the bunches um, in the following season. Here you've got one inflorescence primordia and here's another. And in the very centre is the apical meristem. And we can make an assessment of how fruitful um, a particular vineyard block is by doing some of these bud dissections.